Hi, everyone. Welcome to Home Church. I'm so glad that you're with us today online, whether you're from one of our locations in Alberta or around the world, or you're joining us for the first time. We just want to say to you today, welcome home. Usually we start with the scripture, as we will in a moment, but today I want to sing a song for you. It's called, His Eye is on the Sparrow. It's a song that I used to sing when I was uh, a young boy, and it has blessed me through my life, but over this last week, it's been a huge blessing to me. And I asked our team if we could continue the series for an extra week just so I could preach a message out of the scripture, His Eye is on the Sparrow. But I I just hope this song blesses you as we begin and get into God's word today. And so you can sing it along with me. His eye is on the sparrow. And why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? And why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, hallelujah, my constant friend, His eye is on the little spell And I know he watches me And I'll sing because I'm happy And I'll sing because eyes on the spell and I know he's watching I know he's watching I know he's watching me eyes on the sparrow, and he watches you, and he's watching me. And today we're going to these beautiful scriptures found in Matthew chapter 10 and Matthew chapter 6. It begins in Matthew chapter 10, do not be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God, who can destroy both soul and body in hell. What is the price of two sparrows, one copper coin, But not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without the Father knowing it. The very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Matthew chapter 6. This is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in their barns for your heavenly Father feeds them and aren't you more valuable, far more valuable than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautiful as they are and if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown in the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows what you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Father, I pray that this message would bring such hope, such peace, and such trust in you. Holy Spirit, help me as I deliver it through technology. Pray that every heart 
would be healed, every heart would be stronger through this message today. Give you all the thanks and praise in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen, amen. Well, this song, his eye is on the sparrow, was written in the spring of 1905. It was written by Sevilla Martin, who's a Canadian girl. She was from Nova Scotia. And in the spring of 1905, Sevilla and her husband, Dr. Martin, who was a pastor, were in Elmira, New York, and became friends with Mr. and Mrs. Doolittle. Now, this isn't the Doolittles that can talk to animals. I love that movie. I think it's real that there's somebody who can talk to animals. But it isn't those Doolittles. These are a wonderful couple from New York who had a tremendous impact on the Martins. And the story goes like this, that Mrs. Doolittle had been bedridden for 20 years. And Mr. Doolittle was an incurable cripple who propelled himself to work every day in a wheelchair on, if you can imagine, the roads in 1905. Despite their afflictions, they lived happy lives, and they were found bringing hope and inspiration and comfort to others. And one day, Sevilla Martin asked the Doolittles, asked this question, what is your secret to bright hopefulness? I like those words. Bright hopefulness. And Mrs. Doolittle, who had been in bed for 20 years, said these words. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know that he's watching me. That week, Sevilla Martin wrote the song, His Eyes on the Sparrow. This series, Whatever Comes Our Way, is all about faith, deep trust in God. Of course, we started with Paul the Apostle who was in chains in prison when he wrote the book of Philippians and he says, whatever happens, rejoice in the Lord, right in the middle of his circumstance. He's saying, rejoice in the Lord. Philippians 1, whatever happened to me has not hindered me but helped me. Acts chapter 20, but none of these things move me. It's something about the faith of the Apostle Paul. Then we went and talked about the life of Joseph, who had been betrayed by his brother, sold as a slave, falsely accused. So many difficult things happened to Joseph. And yet he says in Genesis 50, verse 20, you intended these things to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so that I could save the lives of many people. And Joseph has this incredible attitude that increases his altitude. God's using this trial for good. Last week we talked about Job, a wealthy businessman, who in one day lost everything. All of his businesses, his home, his children. And in fact, the last message that comes to him says that his house collapsed on all sides. I know there's many that feel like that today. Things are caving in on all sides, but Job had this amazing response. He said, naked into this world I came. I will leave this world naked. Uh, the Lord hath giveth and taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he praises God in the middle of his circumstances. Then we find in Job chapter 13, he says, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. And he says, I'm gonna praise God and I'm gonna trust God no matter what comes my way. And of course, there's a double blessing at the end of the story because God always turns it for good, but it's a story of the deepest faith, the first story in the Bible, the deepest faith that we possibly can have that no matter what happens, I'm gonna praise God and trust God. It's easy to think about these three people that we've talked about in these last few weeks, to think about the Apostle Paul. Of course God's got his eye on the Apostle Paul, right? He's looking at the Apostle. He's caring for the Apostle. He's sending ministering angels to the Apostle, of course. I mean, he's, he's the man of God. He, he, he wrote most of the New Testament. He was an early church builder, Apostle Paul. 
Oh, it's easy to think that God had his eye on Joseph, the prime minister. Prime minister of Egypt, why wouldn't God have his eye on him and his dream? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, I mean, he's in the light. God's got his eye on him. It's easy to think that God had his eye on Job, the wealthiest person alive at that time, and and, and you think, well, apostle, prime minister, wealthy person. But what about me, God? What about me in my circumstance today? Do you see what's going on in my world? Do you care? Do you know? Are you going to move on my behalf? And that's why I love the sparrow. That's why I love that Jesus talked about the sparrow. And Jesus says something pretty amazing about the sparrow. He says, it's kind of two for one deal. What, what is the price of sparrows? Can you buy two for one copper coin, one penny? One-tenth of a denarius at that time. I mean, you, you don't even pay one penny for one sparrow. It's, it, it's one penny. It's not even... Worth half a penny, a sparrow. But God watches the sparrow and takes care of the sparrow. The lowest amount of currency possible was what Jesus was talking about. And he says the Father's eye is on the smallest thing. Sparrows have little value. Sparrows are little, they're small. Eight ounce little birds, six inches long. There's no such thing as a sparrow KFC because there's nothing to eat. They're so tiny, they're so little. There's, there's nothing there, they're, they're, they're so small. It's actually a beautiful picture of humanity and being in the hand of God. Sparrows are common. They're everywhere. Do you know that the sparrow is the most common bird in the world? They're found in every city, found nesting on the 80th floor of the Empire State Building, found 2,000 feet below ground in the mines of England. They're everywhere. Sparrows are social. You'll rarely find them on the rooftop alone. You'll find them flying together. They're family birds. They have several batches of babies a year, lay three to five eggs with 12 to 15 day incubation periods, and and they're always flying together. Sparrows have, they're a picture of men because they're temporal. They only live four to five years and have a very short lifespan. James 4, 14 says, your life is like the morning fog. You have just a little while and it's gone. Of course, Billy Graham said, life is short, but eternity is forever. It's like a vapor. and Sometimes life feels so long and so short at the same time, doesn't it? But it's like the sparrow. Sparrows sing. I love being on vacation somewhere where there's lots of sparrows and you wake up in the morning to the singing of birds. My wife loves to hear the sound of birds in the morning singing. I sing because I'm happy. These happy little birds, and though they're small and though they're common, and though they might be worth half a penny, God's eye is on the sparrow. The Bible says, if God takes care of the sparrow, this common, temporal, social, little bird, how much more will he take care of you? Such a beautiful picture of being in the hands of God. You know, when I think about wanting to be a bird, you know, if I could picture myself as a bird, well, I would, I would probably pick an eagle you know, I, I would pick, you know, the, the, the scripture in Isaiah, they that wait upon the Lord renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. And 
I love it when we feel the Holy Spirit's presence and it feels like we're flying like an eagle. I'd probably pick a raven, some sort of bigger bird, some sort of large bird. Of course, in the Bible, there's the dove, which is the beautiful picture of the Holy Spirit descending on Jesus and the Father saying, this is my son who I'm well pleased, but the truth is we're we're not really those bigger birds. We're pretty fragile. You may feel pretty fragile today. But I want you to know your life is in the hands of God. The scripture uses amazing imagery of this little sparrow, but it also talks about the hairs of your head are numbered, and I wish God would number a few more on my head. That's what I pray. Lord, you could put a few more hairs on there. For me, I'm follically challenged, and my, my, my wife says that, that I haven't lost any hair. It's just migrated to other places. But I, I, I pray that I could have a few more hairs that God could count. But what it's really saying is, I care about the small details of your life. He knows the hairs on our head, and he knows and cares about the details. And maybe there's people that are watching today, and, and, and your kids have been online You're concerned about filling the gas tank. You go to the pantry and you're wondering how the pantry is going to be full. But can I just tell you today, if his eye is on the sparrow and he cares about the number of hairs on your head, he's caring right now and he's, he's thinking about those things that you're caring about. Then it says, do you see the lilies? I clothe the lilies. And it says these words, the heavenly father, our heavenly father, he knows what you need. So what you're praying for right now, what you're thinking about, what you're worrying about, I just want you to know the God that created the universe that holds you in his hand, he knows what you need. And he's going to provide what you need. And so through this scripture, it says a few different things that is telling us and showing us and helping us with our own mind and with our own heart. And the first thing it says is, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The actual word in there is actually the word phobia. Don't be gripped by fear. You know, when there's phobias, it's, a phobia is when you're gripped and controlled by something and could be the same thing over and over and over again. You know, there's 254 clinical types of phobias. The number one is arachnophobia. Are you scared of spiders? My wife is so scared of spiders. I mean, even dandy long legs, she's scared of like spiders that don't do anything to you. And what amazes me about Becca and spiders is that when there's a spider up on the roof, like it's way up there right in the corner, and she starts screaming, she gets up on a chair and stands closer to the spider. Like, what are you doing standing close to the spider? But she's up on the chair screaming, get the spider. You know, another thing about Becca, and this is gonna cost me, I'm telling you right now, it's gonna cost me, but she's she's afraid of cockroaches. And one time we, we were... Uh, we were out of the country, we were somewhere else, and, and, and we, we went swimming, and the kids brought the towels into the vehicle, and a cockroach came out of the back seat, and we were on the turning lane of a highway, and Becca just stopped in the turning lane, and she just started screaming in the turning lane, and I'm like, Beck, we gotta go, we're in the turning lane. She's like, I'm not moving, there's a cockroach in the car, and I had just bought pizza, And then she started blaming me because of my pizza. She's like, it's because of your pizza. The cockroach wants your pizza. But isn't it amazing how fear will stop you on the highway of life 
and you can't go anywhere, you can't turn anywhere, you freeze up because of fear. I was asking some other people about fear, and I guess Pastor, uh, Pastor Aaron got stuck in an elevator, and she was literally just freaked out for the longest time. She also told me she had, has a fear of fruit because her dad bit into a fruit and then showed it to her, and there was a worm in the fruit, and so she's scared of fruit. You know, you can be scared of the simplest little things because of some experience that happened in your life, but God doesn't want you living in fear. Fear can grip you. Fear can stop you in your road and keep you afraid, but it says don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. In this time, don't let fear get into your spirit. The second thing it says is don't worry. Fear is a, it, it's a heart thing. It's, a, it's something on the inside here. Worry is more of a mental battle. And it says in the scripture, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. It's amazing sometimes how the video can roll. The conversation before the conversation even happens can roll. I wanna just encourage you today, don't worry. And in this scripture it says, are your worries helping you at all? Are they helping you along the, the road of, of, of life? And, and turn your worry into worship. Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. You put God first and you put worry aside. Don't fear and don't worry. Trust that God is gonna turn your trial into a triumph. And the third thing is have faith. In this scripture it says, he will certainly care for you. So why do you have so little faith? Isn't it amazing that Jesus is saying, what are you worried about? The Father sees and he knows and he cares and he's gonna look after you. Why have so little faith? I wanna encourage you to just take a hold of faith today for your future, for what God has for you, for the needs that you're thinking about. Because you are so valued. In fact, you're so valued that God sent his son. On the cross, your life was exchanged for the life of the creator. He held you in his hands on the cross. Paid the infinite price, bought you with a price. The precious blood of Jesus. And of course, there's the famous scripture, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave. But you know what? I'd just like to just frame it just a little bit different for you. God so loved you that he gave his son. He considered you so important. He considered you so valuable. He considered you so loved. His eyes on the sparrow, but his eye was on you before the cross he, he said, I, I approach the cross full of joy because I see what's on the other side of the cross because he saw the value of you on the other side of the cross. Joseph had, thought his brothers had him in his hands. He, he thought that his, he was in his boss's hands. He thought he was in the government's hands. Job thought he was in Satan's hands. But Mr. and Mrs. Doolittle this cheerful couple, even in the middle of their trial, even in the middle of their struggle, he, they say, his eye is on the sparrow, for I know he's watching me. Today, if you could just take your hands, and just put them out before the Lord. Maybe you've got worries and concerns, fears, doubts, and take them and say, God, I put my whole life in your hands today. I put my little concerns in your hands. Thank you that you see, you see the need. Thank you that you count the hairs on my head. Thank you that you see the small things and the large things. And you're gonna care for me. You're taking care of me. You're taking care of my family and I trust you. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, this is my day. I, I need to receive Jesus. I need to put my life into eternal hands. Well, I want to invite you right now, right where you are, 
to put your life into the hands of God, the hands of Jesus that hung on the cross for you. Give him your life. Turn from sin. Turn to Jesus today. Would you pray this prayer with me and you say, Lord Jesus, thank you that you bought me with an incredible price, the price of your own blood. Thank you that that blood washes me and cleanses me, makes me whole, makes me new. Thank you, Jesus, that you love me, that you care for me, that you've called me and purposed me. Would we all pray this today? Thank you, Lord, that I don't have to live in fear. Would you pray this? Thank you, Lord, that I don't have to live in worry. I can cast my cares upon you because you care for me. Would you pray this? Thank you that your eye is on the sparrow. I know that you care for me. In Jesus' name. And I sing because I'm happy. And I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. You stand with me in your home. Would you lift up your hands? Give God your cares. He loves you. He cares for you. His presence is surrounding you right now. Right where you are. Go ahead and sing it with us. If he dresses the lilies. If he dresses the lilies with beauty and splendor. How much more will he clothe you? How much more will he clothe you? If he watches, he's watching over every sparrow. How much more does he love you? How much more does he love you? If he dresses the dresses the lips. He sees you, he knows you, he loves you, he's with you. He's Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Let's put our trust in him. Let's put our hope in him. Let's not let anything steal our joy. Don't let fear steal it, don't let worries steal it. Why do you have so little faith Put your faith and trust in Jesus today. Declare the blessing over you today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. His face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. Lift his countenance towards you. Give you his peace. If his eye is on the sparrow, I know he's watching me. Be so blessed in Jesus' name. And the whole church said, amen. Love you, church family.